I was curious about how money worked. Uh, and I just believe that a lot of other people in the United States just also want to learn how money works. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to p- personal financial planning, it's, hey, where are we at with emergency funds? Uh, how are we looking on our debt? You know, how are we uh, saving and investing for the future? Uh, do you have kids? You know, do you want to help, you know, pay off, uh, offload a little of those costs for college? It's just helping people with money, whatever their next step is, because not everybody has, you know, they step into hundreds of thousands of dollars out of college or they're not born into wealth. Uh, some folks just, you know, just start from start from where they're at. So uh, my goal is to simply just help people with where they're at. Welcome to the show, and thank you for listening. Five seasons in, and today we got another great one. We've got Joe Clavin, a financial advisor at Primerica. You can find Joe at Primerica.com slash Joe Clavin, C-L-A-V-I-N. We're going to get into what is financial planning and what's a day in the life of a financial planner. We're going to talk about building a life and a career based on character. Why not? Good time to start thinking about that with Instagram dragging you down and how stringing a life of trying to win every day can lead to success later in life. Welcome to the show. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Edge of Excellence. Well, Joe, thank you so much for coming in out of St. Louis, Missouri. And Joe has five kids under five years old and a wife and a job. That's crazy. Joe's coming in. After graduating St. Louis University from the financial services industry, where he helps normal people prepare for kids' school, prosperity, a fantastic life after work. He works at Primerica, which everybody's heard of before. And you can find him on any social media platform, Joe Clavin, C-L-A-V-I-N. Joe, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, grateful to be on here this morning. And uh, yeah, thank you. Where uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be on here and just pumped that you reached out and uh, excited to just have a conversation. Well, it's been many years. Before we go way back into your life, I got to figure out, like I do on every show, what is your definition of excellence? Man, my definition of excellence is just waking up every day, and for me, just you know, uh, committing committing your work to the Lord. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in uh, just giving it your all. Uh, you know, day in and day out. And you know what? Some days you're going to win, some days you're going to lose. Uh, but you just got to win the day. Uh, you know what? And if you can look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, "Hey, you know what? I just gave it my all today," then then that's it. All you can do is all you can do, and you know, oftentimes all you can do is enough. Uh, so there you go. There you have it. So excellence is personal. It's determined by every person's ability and then trying every day to win the day. Win the day, Matt. Right on. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I, I I hear that once in a while, this focus on being the best you can be. And really, does it matter? Does it matter what other people people can be? So you're dealt the cards you're dealt. Make the most out of them one day at a time, trying to do a little bit better day after day after day. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, oftentimes for me, when you start to compare yourself to other people uh, is when you get into getting it not not into a great place. So uh, I've really had to focus on just competing with myself uh, day in and day out. And believe me, I didn't learn that by myself. I've learned that for a lot of other mentors and a lot of other folks, probably like you, you know, honestly, just reminding me like, hey, all you can do is just compete with yourself every day. You You can't necessarily control what other people are doing. Uh, and, and their you know, successes and failures, all you can do is just you know, what you can control. And uh, yeah, so that's why that one uh, hits hits home for me. All right. So we're going to talk about financial planning. What is financial planning? Leading people to great decisions because financial planning really is a leadership position of many other people that don't work for you. That's a tough leadership situation to be in. Before we talk about recruiting and training others to come work at Primerica and grow Primerica and be wonderful listeners, and work with people and help people. We got to go way back. We got to see what helped Joe Clavin get to where he's going as the person that's out there training and helping and working and, and living his dreams. What was life like in high school? Did you know you wanted to do this? Did you see this path? What was going on for you in high school? What were you doing to separate yourself? 
Yeah, great question. So so looking back to high school, and like you said, it's every year it is getting way and way and way back. So I, I do appreciate you uh, stressing the way back. But my um, left yeah. arm fell off yesterday, Joe. <laughs> oh, You're my not goodness. old. I was, I was riding old. my mountain bike. All of a sudden I looked down. There's my left arm. It just fell off. So call me back at 20 years. 20 years. OK, gotcha. Yeah. In high school, there was there were, you know, for me, I always had that something inside of me that was competitive. You know, I love sports, whether it was football, uh, tennis, where those are my two best sports. Uh, but I love competing. Uh, you know, I did my best academically. And I think the school that I was in, you know, I, I excelled there. Now, if you put me in a lot of other schools, I probably wouldn't have excelled. There's no doubt about it. But uh, I just knew that, like, hey, all this stuff is going to pay off, Lord willing, one day. Uh, so I tried. I tried my best. And, you know, oftentimes, um, yeah, I didn't always didn't always do as well as what I wanted to. But in high school, I had something in me just kind of wanted to get after it and go for something. So I uh, so got you to knew, you knew in high school. You one of the people that knew in high school and people, some of people's parents tell them some people's parents don't. Some friends tell them some don't. You know, you either have the knowledge or you don't. You have the knowledge that I better try my best, do my best because it's going to matter later. Yeah, I think that was instilled in me. I, I thank God for amazing parents that I have. And, uh, you know, I just learned that, hey, uh, well, again, not to say that I, I did this perfectly, but, hey, these little things are probably going to add up over time. And there was just something always in me that just wanted to go for it, you know, and and I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't know what that was going to look like. I, I probably heard the term entrepreneur in high school and, and didn't really know what that meant kind of towards the tail end of senior year. But, um, you know, there was also a part of me that, uh, you know, was was curious and interested in running your own small business or running your own business. And that was something that uh, wasn't really, you know, talked a lot about in my household growing up. Uh, I come, you know, come from a lot of wonderful uh, family members, but um, not everybody had their own business or, or not everybody was, was trying to grow a business. So it was it was something that was just I was curious about it. I wasn't sure exactly how that was going to look or what I was going to do, but I, I did have that inside of me for sure. OK, so you're getting pretty good grades, you're playing sports, you're doing what you can to get into St. Louis University. And you're, yeah, from, St. Louis. you're from St. Louis, yeah. right? How many yeah, people at St. Louis, St. Louis University go to, are from St. Louis? Not many, right? That is a great percentage. Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. I don't know what the percentage is, but I do got a funny story on that. So in St. Louis, there's a there's a street called Grand Avenue. Uh, it's in the city. I grew up on uh, a, a street right off of Grand. I went to grade school. Uh, on Grand Avenue, I went to high school on Grand Avenue, and then I went to college on Grand Avenue. So I didn't venture out very far. Uh, and, it was but all most pretty, people at St. Louis University close. come from all over the place, right? It's got to be yeah, less I'd than say, 10%. I'd say I'd, probably a little bit more. You know, I'd say 25, 25% of the folks there are from St. Louis, and then, you know, 75% of them are from, yeah, Chicago and 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 international students and all over the country. Uh, yeah, although I don't love the administration at St. Louis University, and I used to do something with the entrepreneurs organization, the Kaufman Center, and someone at St. Louis around entrepreneurship. Maybe it was a Global Student Entrepreneur Awards that maybe that started at St. Louis and then went to Kaufman, and then EO picked it up and we ran with it. Not a fan of the administration at St. Louis University, but I am a fan of the graduates of St. Louis University who also yes, seem to not be right. fans of the administration at St. Louis University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's some there's some folks that I'm thinking of right now that uh, <laughs> huge, huge influences in my life and still positive, are. Positive, positive. We got to get back to positive here, Joe. You've been so positive. That's right. I'm dragging you down. In fact, Man, let's do this. Uh, hold on, hold on. Take out that shit about not being a fan of the administration. All right, keep going. Yeah. So, you know, in high school, I loved, loved my high school experience. And I got to St. Louis University and I was trying to walk on to the men's tennis team. Uh, so that was probably the one sport that I excelled at more than others. You know, I, I don't know if I would have been uh, to qualify for a D1 football program or a D2 football program. I probably could have played D3 or NAIA, something like that. But um, I tried walking on the men's team at St. Louis University after one semester. They politely asked me, like, Joe, stop coming back. Uh, you know, you are no longer uh, you know, playing with us and, uh, you know, ultimately was cut. So that was kind of why I wanted to go to St. Louis U. My father also works at, worked at the hospital. Uh, so we got a lot of tuition off, uh, from a cost perspective, but you know what I was there and I was like, well, now what am I going to do? And, uh, I, again, I kind of knew that, you know, I wanted to do something in business. I don't know what that was going to look like. Uh, so I was in the business school and then one of my buddies on the tennis team, he said, Joe, you need to look into this college works painting program. Uh, I think you'd be great for it. 
And, uh, you know, his name That's is how Matt. I got into it. One of, one of my buddies, yeah. same thing. Yeah. It was just a buddy. It was like through, you know, through a, an athletic relationship. Um, and he said, all right, fine. So he put me in touch with the DM at the time, which was Dan Schaffer, uh, here in St. Louis, he went to Mizzou, but he was doing some work in St. Louis and that all rolled up to Sean Phelps and Chris Hurtigan. And, uh, I remember doing my, my interview at a, a neighboring school at Washington university. I didn't have a car. Uh, so I had a uh, hitch, a, hitch a ride on the, on the Metro. Yeah. I didn't have a car. So I, I had a, a hitch ride either. on the Metro. I didn't have a suit either. So I had to go out and get a suit. Uh, and looking back, like, man, this is as baggy as it gets. Cause mine, I didn't know was, mine time, was a jacket from one person and pants from another. So it didn't even match. Didn't even match. Mine did match. And I think my dad maybe even took me out to get a couple suits for, for that. But, um, I didn't know that you were supposed to get them, you know, tailored and, and, and looking sharp and all that. So I just showed up and, uh, man, I remember getting grilled by, uh, Chris Hurtigan and Dan Schaffer and all those guys, but, uh, thank the Lord, uh, that they said yes. Uh, and that, uh, that was kind of started my college works journey. Uh, at we St. used University. to have a thing. This is a side note. We used to have a thing is, you know, college work sometimes is the first professional experience people have. They've all had jobs. And by the way, uh, I, I, you, now you have five kids under five, which I can only imagine. That's a lie. My, the fifth one just turned five. So I've got five, five, five and under. under. Okay. Well, that, that's yeah. Not, so that's I don't want to lie to anybody. And right, luckily right, right. you've got a couple girls in there because holy moly, those boys can be a little bit of a problem early on. But, you know, they people go through life and uh, here's the five things that you have to have your kids do before they get out of high school is measured by college. So 30,000 alumni, we have all this data on what they've done. And there's like 40 points we measured. And it came down to, did they work full time while they're in high school? Have they worked three years or more? Now, so some of them are juniors in college or whatever, but full time in high school, work three years or more. Uh, and full time is defined by 30 hours a week. Have you worked 30 hours a week? Have you worked? Um, three years or more, did you get above a 3-0, which is weird, not a 3-5, not a 3-8, a 3-0. Did you play varsity sports? And it doesn't matter if you live in California where it's impossible to get on varsity or New Mexico where it's easy. Did you push yourself to play varsity sports? And then was your major one of the 90% that are tougher majors or did you pick basket weaving? So those five things, if you say yes to all five of those, you're 256 uh, percent more successful than yes to three of them, and if you can't say yes to any, we've never measured a dollar of revenue from anybody that said uh, no to all. And if it's only one, the average was like a thousand dollars in revenue or something crazy like that. Um, wow, so that's interesting. Make sure your kids work all five and of play those. sports, not and play sports or like they think at least of yeah, California. I, I think I'm four out of those five. You know, I I don't want to sit. You know, I definitely played varsity sports. I uh, had a 3-0 and above. Um, worked for three years. Yeah, worked for three years in, in high school. Um, was in a, a business entrepreneurship focus at St. Louis University. And the, and the hour per week one is where it maybe get a little wonky. I probably worked 20, 25 hours. I don't know, 20 you hours can, a You week. can imagine, like, you go get your first job. It's 10 hours a week. You don't know how to talk to anybody. You learn how to talk. You get fired or you quit. You go get your second one. Now you're up to 17, 20 hours a week. You're learning more of this interpersonal. Now you're learning to organize yourself. You get to the third one. And finally, you get to work full time in the summer. So you have to wake up. Oh, you have my to God. Stay out there. You have to do the eight hour days. You've got to do that stuff um, before you. Move. I don't know why I went off on this tangent. We got to get back to college. Hey, so, all I, five things. My kids will do them. Yeah. Make sure all my friends know about that. So uh, you're in, you're in St. Louis. You love St. Yes, St. Sir. Louis. You go to school in St. Louis, you go, you're in high school, you want to set yourself apart. You must have done some things in high school. You're, you're trying your best. You're playing your sports. It must have set you apart because SLU is a kind of a prestigious school, hard to get into. Then you get into college, you try the tennis thing. They tell you you're not good enough. Was You said it was Division One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Division One. I, I, I still believe it's Division One currently, but yeah, definitely Division, Division One tennis. So you, you weren't quite the, the the professional candidate that you want to. And I know a lot about tennis. You, you get people that are like ranked in the top nine hundred. The entire top nine hundred goes to Division One, and then the next group goes to Division Two. So it's it's hard to. Uh, you were in the top nine hundred, maybe in the world. I guess I. I when when I got cut, yeah. Well, when when so you didn't make the top nine hundred. Uh, yeah, exactly. And so top you, a thousand, maybe so, top a thousand. So then your buddy's like, go do the college works thing, and you want to? Did you know you wanted to go into financial planning and financial management at the time? Not at all. 
So you're you're no. out fishing. You're exploring for what to do. You had no. Sometimes people are like, I want to be in financial planning, and then they decide, oh yes, I do, or they want to be like my daughter wanted to be in chemistry. And, okay, oh no, I don't. So you uh, you had no idea. You're just fishing. Not at all. You know, and there's some. You know, there's a guy like uh, that rings a bell. Like I think it's Adnan. I think here in St. Louis, you went maybe to St. Louis University, but you know, that's the type of guy that I think of. Like, man, I think he can. That you guy is just put now? together. I have no idea. I know he's a way, way smarter than I am. You know, we mentioned you're, chemistry, you are, biology. You want to know what he does? I don't, you know, it probably make me he's, feel bad he's about your myself, age, but, right? He's like 32. Yeah, yeah, I think probably he runs too older. the largest hospital network as I believe CEO in the Chicagoland area. That's amazing. So he's a doctor, yeah, that's amazing. a young doctor, and he's I believe he's and I could be stating it wrong, but this show is not about accuracy. It's about whatever I say. Um. <laughs> right. I, I, I had I have an episode. There's he's he's I've got a podcast with Adnan. Yeah, I gotta listen to it. And I believe he runs all of the uh the the biggest hospital chain in Chicagoland as the CEO. And he's a either ER doctor or some type of doctor. And I think he's only like 32, 33 years old. Because not many people that are doctors went out and followed a business path. And got the communication skills, the leadership skills, the hiring, the firing, the those interpersonal skills. So you you're in college at, as a freshman. You decided to do college, yeah, because yeah, you did it three. Yeah, years. As a, yeah freshman. Uh, yeah, for guys like that, I did not have that skill set or, or even really believe that I could do that with chemistry and, and kind of combine everything. I went into the business school route. I did know that I gravitated towards business, uh, and particularly just looking into what entrepreneurship was and what it can do. And uh, yeah, when I saw college works, I'm like, yeah, I, I really want to do this. I really want to step outside my comfort zone and just try something different. Uh, you know, definitely the, I, I saw a way to set myself apart from a experience standpoint, from a financial standpoint, uh, you know, all of the things. So, you know, I definitely saw that. Um, and I didn't know what I was going to do afterwards. I just knew that this would be a great way to differentiate myself after I've completed the program, whether it would be going into, you know, working for a company or, you know, starting one, of my own, but, um, yeah, I just knew that that would probably be a good next step one way or the other. All right. So let's talk about, um, finance and financial planning. So you're in the business school, you're preparing for who knows what you're out there fishing and you were focused on your bit was your business degree of BS. Yes. So sometimes business degrees are BAs. And if you go to a school where it's a BA, they're leaving out some of the crappy classes. Um, if you're in the BS version, you have to you have to take the stats. Um, you have there's two stat classes. There's more math. What's the other thing you have to take for the BS? Instead of uh, one man, stats, it's even, two stats. Yeah, I remember stats one and stats two. That was not my my strong suit, but um, yeah, whatever I, the I, worst I, classes are, whatever the take more yeah, of those that's I had to take those right to get the, exactly. to get the BS. And you're. Uh, Sitting in there and, and in finance, just you think back to the people that are in finance, you get a lot of people that go into financial planning. You get people that go into consulting. You get people that go into investment banking. Um, and, you know, if you're in investment banking or consulting, you're doing the 100 hour a week for two years, getting grinded, grinded, grinded to see if you could make it. And then usually you go do something else. Where are some other areas people from those finance classes delve into? You know, that that hits a lot of them on the head. I think there's a few of them that it maybe kind of uh, could be a different category. But in the accounting world, you know, a lot of those folks kind of went into that, um, you know, whether it was a, a lot of those a lot of those guys and gals at the time. I think, you know, that the, the, uh, maybe the big five, I'm not sure if it's still five, but, you know, go work for the big five and, you know, go, go have a, a goal to become a partner. Or maybe you shoot off and do something else. But uh, a lot of folks did that as well. But. And then uh, you have the a lot of people mind. that just want yeah. a finance degree. Finance degree is a great degree to get and apply. I wish I had a finance degree. I just couldn't do those stats. Um, it's great to apply to any aspect in business. In fact, it's great to apply anywhere because you get all that math knowledge. And it's not about what your degree is. It's about learning how to think, learning how to read, learning how to write. So you decided immediately to go into financial planning. So why don't you just talk, walk us through what exactly is financial planning? What do you do as a financial planner? What skills do you need? And I'm going to pepper you with some things because I know a lot about this industry due to some of my friends being in it. Yeah, first of all, like what is that? It's just, I think it's helping people with money, right? So I think growing up, a lot of us, right? Probably the conversations in the home, you know, we weren't always talking about money. In high school and in college, I feel like a lot of folks aren't 
taught about money. And in the classes you are taught about money in college, oftentimes have more to do with corporate finance uh, and how to handle that type of uh, you know, uh, money management. A lot of times it's just not personal money management. So when I, uh, when I concluded my experience with, with college works, which was a blessing, did three years and I knew I wanted to do something. I wasn't sure, but I was always curious about money. I wasn't sure how it worked. You know, I thought that the the stock market was, was witchcraft or like black magic or sorcery. And, you know, there's some, there's some perspectives on it. I just didn't know anything about it. So I was curious about how money worked. Uh, and I just believe that a lot of other people in the United States just also want to learn how money works. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to p- personal financial planning, it's, Hey, where are we at with emergency funds? Uh, how are we looking on our debt? You know, how are we, uh, saving and investing for the future? Uh, do you have kids, you know, do you want to help, you know, pay off, uh, offload a little of those costs for college? It's just helping people with money, whatever their next step is, because not everybody has you know, they step into hundreds of thousands of dollars out of college or they're not born into wealth. Uh, some folks just, you know, just start from start from where they're at. So uh, my goal is to simply just help people with where they're at. OK, so we're going to talk about that for a second because it's really teaching. But I just hit just another thing hit me as you were talking. You remember that organization that took down GameStop and it was a bunch of. Uh, what was it called? It's an online uh, oh, uh, this... Reddit Reddit cruise that, uh, yeah, yeah, that I think it all started on some um, Reddit conversation thread. through Reddit Reddit threads, right? Mm-hmm. You know who started um, that conversation? I do not. Some intern you interned with, and I forget. Oh, no. I don't think of the name. Well, think of the name of it. They made a Netflix show about it. But you, I watched the Netflix show. But yeah, I you interned with that guy. They, oh um, my gosh! I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him on the podcast. He's friends with Sean Phelps. But when that whole thing went down, Sean's like, did you see the news? The GameStop thing? And I forget the name of that. They invented an entity. It was called something. Do that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, We'll we'll come back to it. But Come back to him. It'll pop into my mind. I'll tell you. You'll remember the guy. You have a pretty good uh, class of College Works. uh, uh, You have a good alumni uh, class. I do. I I think that was part of the the secret sauce to success is just I was around the Chris Hurtigans, the Sean Phelps, the Nick Niehauses, the Adnans, the Dan Schaffers, the Matt Gordons, like those guys uh, and gals. There was a few gals crushing it too. That um, The new group's even better. The new group's even new better? Group. I mean, <laughs> yeah, those, I mean, those are great people. We don't know what the new group is, but we had a 19-year-old, oh, eight, 18-year-old, 19-year-old pull off $360,000. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's unbelievable. Broke the record Good by them. like 80 grand. All right, yeah. back, back to business, back to business. Yes, okay, sir. So you're a teacher. And so I always wanted to be a teacher. My dad was a teacher. I just needed to be paid more. And so what I do is I teach people about business now. You're teaching people about money. And I hear it all the time. They don't teach me about money when I'm young. Or my parents didn't know anything about money. And so you're teaching people the rule of 73. You're teaching people to invest 10 or 20% of their income first. You're teaching them the little life rules. And and you're teaching them that, you know, one day you may not be able to work and you're going to have some money saved up. And you're teaching them to understand how much they need. And I've been through the process when I was green. There's a lot of teaching that goes around um, in financial planning. And so if you're going to go into financial planning, you're going to want to work with people. You're going to need to be that person that loves working with people. You're going to need to be that person that loves helping. And if you're not helping and delivering value, you don't make money. So you got to think about the profit secondary. Absolutely. Same as everything else. It's the customer first. So you're a teacher. Um, You're helping. You're a strategic thinker in financial planning, forward thinking. Um, And I had one financial planner say to me, you're going to need more money when you retire than you need now. Like what? Why is that? I don't have to pay for my house. Yeah, and, and, I don't have to pay for my car. Inflation is just yeah. It's not, no, yeah. no, not the inflation. inflation. We'd already adjusted for inflation. I gotcha. Um, Healthcare costs. No. Not yeah. For that oh, lifestyle. Either. Lifestyle. Gotcha. Like you like to fly around in business class a lot. You're going to be gone <laughs> all the time. You're going right. to be living in houses that you don't own. Um, it's going to be more expensive. I didn't know that. So you have to. You're 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 a strategic forward thinker and teaching people to think strategically into the future. What else are you doing? I think it's educating, it's teaching, uh, and it's also a lot of it's encouraging uh, because I feel like a lot of times, uh, you know, people, we always are our own worst critic, right? You know, you know, there's always somebody on our shoulders talking to us, whether it's good or bad. Well, you're describing you know, the job of a district uh, manager. 
Uh, that's, uh, that sounds, yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. And that's the thing is just like you mentioned all those skill sets. And those are all the things that I learned through the College Rush Painting Program is that, hey, it had nothing to do with painting. It had everything to do with people. And, and that's what I, I still am working at that to this day. Shoot, ask my wife, ask some of my best friends. <laughs> Actually, don't ask my wife. Don't ask some of my best friends. But uh, still working on all those people skills. But um, yeah, I mean, you have to be an, an encourager. You have to be uh, a coach, a teacher. Uh, uh, and in some ways, um, and this is something that I can get better at to, the, you know, to, to this day as well. But sometimes you have to be, sometimes you have to challenge people. Uh, and, and, you know, everybody likes a coach, you, you have know, to be but a leader. sometimes you have to be a leader. Sometimes you don't like hearing what your coach has to say, but you know what? They're right. You know what? Those are the, what they're saying is true. Uh, and I, you know, just doing that for our clients as much as possible. It's just like, Hey, I just want to, this is what I believe. Let's just look at this information. And, and this is, this is, this is what I believe we need to do. Uh, and sometimes it's not always met with, uh, with joy, but I think that. Um, you know, sometimes it's that too, but you're just dealing with people. So that's reading, that's reading body language, that's reading tone and that's using pauses. That's watching their eyes. That's all the things that you learn at college works. Uh, and that was something that I, I did, you know, I enjoy people and, uh, I want, I want people to do well. And of course I want to do well too, but, um, you know, I think it's a byproduct of making sure that you're helping folks. And, and that that's when, you know, obviously you get helped as well, but yeah, all those things. You I missed say a big that, one. You missed a big one. I was waiting for it. Uh, couples counselor slash psychologist. <laughs> yeah. You know what? In my office, Mediator. if you were to flip around this camera, if you were to flip around the camera, I've got a couch in here, um, <laughs> you know, in the office behind me. So it, it is, it's just, you're doing people because, you know, oftentimes, you know, when you're in these conversations, one person's looking at, at the other person, like, well, what do you think? And then the other person is like, well, I don't know. I didn't in, in just got down the rabbit hole, but you know, I think oftentimes we'll, we'll always point the finger at the other person, but I think some of the leadership principles you learn at college works is that, Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, all progress starts with taking personal ownership of, of where you're at. So just try and take the steam out of that conversation with couples or, or take the steam out of the room and just say, Hey, you know what? It is what it is. We learn from that. Let's figure out what we need to do moving forward. Uh, and that's, you know, some of the stuff, again, that you, those skills that you, you just have to learn in, in business and you're not going to learn them in a textbook. You just got to learn them out in the field, so to speak, and just learn, learn them with people. So it's funny. And I'll, I'll read you what you read. You're going to laugh when, when you realize what you oh did boy. say. Oh boy. Teaching, forward thinking and strategic, encouraging, coaching, leading, mediator, therapist, nothing about the finance and the math, which is a big part of your job because it's secondary, right? It's not about here's the investments that work and here's what makes the most money and here's what I think is going to do better or worse. It's about knowing the person before the product, right? So you have a high a risk adverse person. You're not going to talk about what you think is the greatest opportunity for them to invest because it's going to be too risky, right? You're going to talk about bonds and things that aren't. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and you're absolutely right. You know, it's funny that you even caught that. Um, it's so true because people people won't listen to you until they know that you both you know care about them, right? We all we've heard that saying, right? You know, people don't know how much you you know they don't care about how much you know they they want to know how much you care. But it's so true. Once you feel like you're in it with that person that you you're on the same level, then I feel like then they're they're willing to listen about the the financial products, the the strategies, the 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 all the metrics. But you just gotta first try and connect with a human being, which is tough to do. Some are, some are easier than others. Right. And, um, I think that's a lot of what we do is just trying to connect, connect with people on a basic human level, uh, and then just go, go from there. Yeah. Cause the job that you I mean, the, the job of, of a financial planner is to know which investments are wonderful investments, know which hedge fund and, and mutual fund managers are going to be doing a good job into the future, um, spending a lot of time researching and understanding picks, you know, getting questions from uh, uh, clients and finding the answer if you don't know it tracking the market, tracking the trends, probably reading the newspaper from many different countries every day to see what's in the news and predicting what's going to happen. You know, that's the job of a financial planner, but you don't get to do that job if you can't get employees, clients, and that's right. the people whole thing. skills. 
You know what? I do want to mention this. One of my mentors, uh, his name is Chris Royce. He's a national sales director out of Tennessee. Uh, and uh, he is a godly man. He is someone that I, uh, you know, someone that I want to be when I grow up. And he told me one day that, Joe, 80% of this business is communication and 20% of the business is knowing what to do with the money. And again, I still, you know, feel like I'm learning that to this day, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to mimic and copy what he told me. Yeah. And so now you, it, eventually I mean, everything progresses. And so it's progressed to the point now where you've got to go off and find people to be financial planners and probably fill other spots um, in, in the business. You're probably still finding clients, but I bet a lot are finding you after 12 years. Uh, what, what, what are, what do you need to do to move up in financial planning? What other skills do you need to have? I guess it's the same people skills, but what took you from, you know, just forward client facing to being part of building the business and running the business and bringing in the employees and training the employees and, and motivating the employees. Yeah, that's a great question. Members. I think they're not really yeah, employees think, in your industry, are they? They're yeah, really I've got a, we've got, we, yeah, we've got a couple, we've got some office, we've got office staff uh, that helps and and her name is Christine and, and we could not do anything what we what we do here without without her. But uh, on the agent side of the business, yeah, we're kind of we're looking to recruit, train and develop kind of the next generation of leaders. Uh, and ultimately, I would love to just teach someone how to start and grow a business in the financial services industry. Uh, so, you know, we're we're looking for those people. And what that takes is, is ultimately just kind of sharing your story and telling your testimony and say, hey, look, all I know is that this is where I was. Uh, you know, this is how it went. And this is where we're going. Uh, and like, you know, I don't know if that would jive with you person. But if you're looking to go into business for yourself, if you like the idea of helping people with money and teaching them how to do that, and if you thirdly have a have a heartbeat to maybe earn a little bit more income or maybe to uh, to be, you know, your own business owner. If if those are three things that you can say yes to, then this may be a good fit for you. Uh, and now we're, we've got about twenty agents. Uh, you know, some are more involved than others, obviously, as far as their, uh, you know, just like in as a district manager, as a VP or whatever. You know, there's some branch managers. There's a scale, right? But you know, some are more, some are more involved than others. But you know, that that's another skill set that I'm continuing to learn and grow into this day is just uh, is leading uh, leading people, not managing people. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, that's something that we're looking forward to doing in 2024, but we've got about 20 agents currently and we want to grow that, but, uh, yeah, just teaching them all the things about the business, whether it's the people skills, whether it's the actual financial planning aspect of it, whether it's the, the business management, the, ad, the administrative, like, Hey, you've got an office, there's staff, there's, there's just multiple things to running a business. And I couldn't even imagine, you know, you mentioned some of the names earlier in the podcast. The scale in which they're playing at is is unreal, and and Matt, probably some of the folks you get to hang around, the scale of businesses is, is unreal. Actually, one of my best buddies, Keegan, he talks about like somebody runs Amazon. Jeff Bezos not only is he the world famous, wealthiest, whatever, but someone runs the company, and it's it would be unbelievable to kind of pull back the veil and and see what goes on with these these amazing organizations. But yeah, just trying to to juggle all the plates and and do it well. Well, whatever you're good at. So, I mean, you start in whatever at, at SLU, they'd call it a pyramid scheme. You start at, uh, <laughs> you, 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 right. you, you start as a person doing a job. And then eventually you become a person supervising other people doing that job if you're good. And when you get to that level, you go into recruiting, you go into training, you go into probably life planning and future planning and vision setting. I mean, that's the next step of whatever career you're in. So you have to be really good at whatever the industry is. You have to be good at financial planning or in my case, managing people and, and teaching people or, or uh, in another construction company, maybe you have to be good at actually doing the construction work. Uh, and then you move up to that supervisory role because you have to know the product or service. Man, anytime you move there, there's going to be a recruit, recruit, retain, train. Um, I don't like to say motivate, but maybe maybe strategic forward thinking, you know, vision setting. That's what you do as a financial planner. You're doing it with people you work with. Any business you're in, if you're listening right now, you want to be in financial planning, you want to be in medicine like Adnan that we're talking about, you want to be in politics, anything that you do, you're going to work to master that. And then probably someone's going to say, hey, can you teach me? Or, hey, can you teach them? Or, hey, will you go find some more people? That's the next step. So that's what you're doing right now. And again, 
You can find Joe on LinkedIn or any of the um, social media, C-L-A-V-I-N in St. Louis. Um, and so you've, you've worked for 12 years to get to this place. And along these, along the line, you had to make some sacrifices. This is my favorite question. Um, I know you're only 32, so we don't have to go very far back. Hey, you know what? Hold on, hold on. 35, 35. Oh, I, my I must, goodness. I 30, that. I know, 5. 35. Your yeah, arm just fell off, Joe. Your arm I know. just fell ah! off. Yeah, I oh, told no, you no, older. there goes an ear. Um, 35. 15 more years, your whole body just sees. Oh, by the way, we started so off today. Sad. Joe's like, hey, you sound like you have a cold. No, I slapped and I'm over 50. I just found that <laughs> and way. And you just woke up. You yeah. just That's how <laughs> it is. just wake up. That was like hours after I woke up. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm, you know what I meant. You know what I meant. That's just how it, <laughs> I just hadn't talked. My yet. back is, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Come, come back in 15 years. So back in the day, there was something that you wanted to do and you couldn't do it. Um, you had to make a sacrifice to do something else. For me, my family was going to Mallorca, Spain. I had to skip it to spend spring break doing the College Works gig. Thank God I did that. I would have just been partying in Mallorca with my brother and wasted that opportunity. What was yours? What was your sacrifice that you look back and say, oh, I'm thank goodness I did that? You know, I think when you mentioned like even in uh, in college like yeah you, you kind of miss out on some of those experiences in college now i will say there's plenty of time to to have those fun experiences with with your classmates in college and that's what another thing that i was taught at college works is like hey you got to get a planner uh, and you got to kind of start putting the yeah, putting the things you want to do when you're pick, pick and, and choose, choose there's right there's a party every night you don't get to there's go a, to all right of them. you don't have to you can go to a couple you'll still go to a few you don't have to go to all of them but i'd say i'd say in my early 20s right out of college and I was getting started in this business, at least with the firm that where where we're at, it's it's 100% commissions and residuals and bonuses and, and stuff like that. So, um, man, there was a couple times where you just look back and you're like, Lord, I, I don't know how this is going to work. Like, I do not see the path here. And and ultimately, for me, it it really drew me closer to my faith with with him and and, and just really trusting in in him and his ultimately direction for my life. But it also is just a practically, it was, I don't know where the next client's going to come from. I, I don't know how, how are we going to make rent this month? How are we going to make expenses? Uh, you know, I, I've got someone that wants to join the organization and, and I'm only one step ahead of them. Uh, and I'm supposed to maybe teach some people some things like I just do not see how this is going to work. So I think the sacrifice, Matt, is, man, there were some very uncomfortable times there. But ultimately, I think I look back and and those were very formative in just trusting that one, you know, for me, it was just trusting in the Lord with, with as much as my heart as I could do in that moment, just knowing that he'll provide. And then secondly, just trusting that, you know what, other people have done this, you know, uh, you know, this experience that I've gained in the past, like, Hey, I know that like in the beginning of college works, I don't know where my next paint job is going to come from. I don't know how we're going to do all this revenue, but you know what, you just keep doing it day in and day out and, and, and you get there. And, that's kind of what happened in, in some ways, you know? And uh, so that was, that was probably some of the sacrifices is just, I didn't get to go on all the trips that some of my friends went on in the early twenties. I didn't, um, you know, financially couldn't do all the things as you're starting and, and growing and building a business. I, uh, and, and thankfully though today, and, and we still want to kind of grow, we still want to grow the business, but I'm thankful for, you know, the, the small successes that we have, um, because it does allow you to kind of build your life around your business uh, and, and not necessarily have a business or an, an employment relationship with somebody where you just there's that and then your life revolves around that. And, uh, you know, with five kids and my wife, who is incredibly supportive and we couldn't do that, we couldn't do anything without her and a lot of our local church uh, folks and, and a lot of our friends and family. Thank God that there's some flexibility now and some things that all the seeds that you planted then are, are starting to we're starting to reap a little bit of that now. Uh, not as, you know, not as much as some other folks that you kind of meet in the business world, obviously, but uh, those are the sacrifices that I look, look back on and say, Hey, you know what? It was worth it. And it'll probably, you know, Lord willing continue to be worth it as, as things continue to grow and, and evolve. I don't know if I've heard that. That's pretty interesting. So you didn't come up with a specific, I didn't get to go to Mallorca. I had to skip the parties. You came up with, I was stressed out. I sacrificed the calm life of punching a clock, showing up when they told me, getting a paycheck. I sacrificed that in my 20s. 
And I had, I did this weird, stupid internship where I had to go make it happen. And I wake up and I don't have work for my employees in two days and I better get it today or I'm in big trouble. And I guess, and then you entered that life. I mean, that's my life right now. I was sitting, I was mountain biking with a buddy yesterday. Both of us have considerable amounts of cash, like cash. Like I have like three different accounts, which is cash that I won't invest because I've been through the recession. I took my, my Roth IRA that I saved up as a young person went down to $500 in the recession is currently at zero because you can't put any money in a Roth after a certain time. So I lost it all. And I'm like, okay, I just need to make sure I have some cash. We're driving in the car and he's like, what is it going to take for me to not worry that all my buildings won't be rented next year? And I won't be like, I'm preparing for half as much income and I'm prepaying this. And I'm like, I'm the same way, Kevin. I, uh, I have all these cash accounts and I have to get the balances from my wife every week because I'm so nervous that something's going to happen. And it's just like, that's our life, right? There's no security. So you decided back in, if you're an entrepreneur, it can all come tumbling down for one reason, one reason only personal guarantees, personal guarantees. That's so nerve wracking that the bank can take everything I have. Now you work to get rid of personal guarantees that at a quarter billion dollars, I shouldn't have personal guarantees anymore, um, which is crazy, but it's just constant stress. So, so you decided to be stressed out about paying the bills in college, and that gave you confidence to be stressed out about paying the bills as an entrepreneur out of college. And if you're in financial planning and, and you're not going to eat if you're looking to hunt in financial planning, you eat what you help. You don't eat what you hunt. You eat what you help and you eat what you nurture. It's the opposite of hunting, right? And so you have the confidence because when you were young, you realized you could get it done. And that gave you confidence to get it done with Abby. Shout out to Abby. There with five kids under five. I'm still saying under five. One is twins. One is twins. One is twins. That's right. So you had the confidence to be able to maybe take care of Abby and then take care of the first child that was born. Then the, and then the second, then the third, and the fourth. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're 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 so right. And a lot of that confidence, I think, I think looking back, I wish I would have told myself some things differently. And um maybe there was more arrogance than confidence. And I still think that that probably for me that those things get they, you know, they connect too often than what I would like. Um, but thank God I did college works because I I kind of had a an experience that I knew what that was like, you know, you you're you're learning how to paint, right? You're like, what the heck? You know, you're learning how to use the equipment. You're, you're, shoot, you're learning how to lead, manage people. You're learning how to fire and 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 let go of people, right? You're client expectations and, you know, hey, just are we going to tr- make payroll, right? Just with trying to get my painters paid and just after that, the margins that you learn. So all those things that I learned in college were a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways that gave me confidence knowing that like, okay, I could, I could probably run a business. And, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's what it is. It's the little steps. And if we go back to those five things, you have to work, you have to um, uh, try, you have to push yourself. That's what those five things are measuring. And so over the course of life, you develop more and more confidence. You get better and better. Well, I love that sacrifice. Last question I have for you. If you're going to give yourself some advice, Joe, who maybe doesn't know he wants to go into financial planning, maybe he doesn't, but advice for your old 20-year-old self, what would that advice be? Uh, two things come to mind, Matt. I think the first thing is that, hey, Joe, I think you should revisit you know, your faith at a younger age uh, and just knowing like, hey, Joe, you've got maybe, maybe 70, 80 short years on this planet, right? And uh you know, there's some so there's some bigger things out there that you should probably start to consider and be aware of. So that would be the first thing, just knowing that that ties into everything in life, that that faith component. And then secondly, Matt, I would say that, Joe, you probably don't realize how much of your character is going to influence your life, you know, as you get older, uh, meaning professionally in the business world. Uh, you know, in with your spouse and, and dating and parenting and and uh, all the things that you're involved with as an adult, right? But 
you know, those, those decisions that you make as a young person, they continue to compound over time, good or bad. And, and those decisions that you make as a young person, they can continue to grow you and shape you and mature you uh, into something that you'd be proud of, or it can continue to grow you and shape you and mature you into a person that you're not proud of. And I'd say that looking back, you know, if I'm talking to my 20 year old self, I'd say, you know what? Hey, it's, it's uh, yellow. You're only 20 once enjoy college, uh, do all the things, you know, all the things you get to have fun with in, in the dorms and uh, being a young guy. But, but keep in mind that, you know, keep in mind the long game, you know, don't be sh- so short sighted with your words and how you treat people uh, and how you come off and, and all those things, because one day you're going to, you're going to reap that harvest too. So I would say, just be careful of what you sow. Uh, and you know, it, it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. So looking back, I'd say, I wish I would have worked on my character a little bit more than, than what I did. Yeah. And the care. And if you're, if you're derailed, if you're listening right now and you're derailed and you're known as the weed person on campus, <laughs> or you're known as the big partier, or maybe like me, um, your values haven't developed very well. And you're, you know, I, I was not nice to women in college and it's one of the regrets I have. Um, and so I changed that. You can change that. So it's never too late to change, but character counts, right? Um, and what you do is noticed. So people will gravitate to you if you're lifting. And other people will gravitate to you if you're putting people down, but it's the wrong people. You are the sum of your five closest friends. Well, Joe, I really hope that um, you get some uh, solid people that are listening to this from college works. I have a lot of people that come to me all the time that want to go into financial planning. That's why we did this today. We wanted to break it down. Um, I know your character. I know your work ethic. Um, I know your moral standing. I know why you're here in the world and it's not to make some money off of someone else's investments. You're here in the world to lift and promote and grow yourself, your community, others. Thank you for making time today to come on the show. Thank you for making time for the Edge of Excellence. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday with those kids. I can only imagine five kids around the Christmas tree. That's got to be amazing. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for having me. It was an absolute joy to be on here. And and same to you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, all the things. But uh, yeah, so thankful for being on here today. Don't forget to look up Joe on LinkedIn, Joe Clavin. He's looking for wonderful, wonderful people with big time resumes and a lot of strong character. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Edge of Excellence.